Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Paul says that a, a natural man cannot put any determination of value on a spiritual thought, a spiritual word. To him, it has, how do I, what value do I put on it? To him, it's nothing. It's junk. It's like, oh, that's a piece of junk. I don't need it. I don't even put value on it. I had no, but to the spiritual man, listen to this. To the spiritual man, the one who knows the things of God's spirit. The one, and by the way, Jesus said, if you, if you come follow me, I give you my spirit. You get the spirit of God. And when you get that gift, oh. Well, how does your discernment change? Do you start to be able to tell how valuable things of the spirit are? Do you, are you able to now discern, wow, that's actually pretty good. See, before I was in Christ, things about the spiritual life seemed stupid to me. These Christians, they don't have any fun, you know? They follow these rules, and they, and, and they can't do a lot of stuff that, you know, like, to me, are the most pleasurable things. Punching someone in the face, they don't do that. You know, what is wrong with them? I mean, there's some people need punching. That's what I thought, anyway. In fact, I still do, but I just... <laughs> I had to suppress the urge, you know. My wife, when you're raised in a Sicilian house with a really rough uncle, you know... Punching is sometimes like a, a, a manly expression of, you're an idiot, and I want to make sure you know. Let me knuckle print you, you know? I mean, it's just, I have to suppress that. We were watching the UFC fighters, and I was like going, what a dream job. You get paid to punch people, and they don't get mad at you. And they give you a paycheck. And if you cross over like Conor McGregor, you get 100 million bucks even though you'll lose the fight, you know? I mean, come on. I could have done that. I would have, and I would have done it for half. You know? I mean, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, my wife's like, you really would. would you? I'd do it for 20 bucks, man. I don't, you're allowed to? But that's a natural mind. And when people would talk spiritual things like self-control, the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, Kindness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things as these, there is no law. I'd be like, oh, that is the stupidest stuff I ever heard. Who needs self-control? I just need to punch them. But then I, I came to be born again. And all of a sudden, things that were like totally, I didn't see any value. I didn't, there was no value in that. All of a sudden, I start to realize how valuable that really is. When you don't punch the person and you don't hurt them and you, or, or you show mercy over judgment. You know, the Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. But see, I was quick to judge. I don't know if any of you ever had this issue in your spiritual journey, but, but I mean, there was just certain people I figured needed judging. And I was volunteering. And I, I, I volunteered quickly. The only thing I didn't know, do you guys know what Jesus said in, in Matthew? He said, he said, judge not, lest you be what? Yeah, yeah. Judged. Is that an optional quote? Like, I mean, does it always have to happen? Like, if every time you judge, will you actually be judged? Yes. How many of you like being judged? Feels good. You're in for it. Heap it on. Go ahead. You know, I never get shows a hand, by the way, for this question. Nobody. Nobody likes being judged. But yet we're so quick to judge others. And I'm here to tell you, don't do it. And I know I'm telling you a spiritual thought with spiritual words, but it's for your own good. And if you can hear it, it's one of the best things you can practice is resisting judgment. You know, you see someone down on their luck and you, you know, maybe you're thinking, well, they probably did some stupid things to get in that position in life. Mercy resists judgment. Mercy says, hey, we don't know what happened to them. We don't know what they've gone through. We don't know what has, you know, transpired that would even put them in that situation. And, and we're not here to judge them. We're, the the Bible is very clear. We're, in Jude, he says, we're to hate the, the garment polluted by sin, 
but we're to love the sinner. It's basically hate the sin, love the sinner. And you can't sit there and judge the sinner for their sin because they're sinners. You're supposed to just love them. And just doing that, that's mercy applied in real action towards others. And when someone shows you that kind of behavior, when they, they love you despite your, your, your shortcomings, how do you feel? I mean, those are the people I love to be around. They're not sitting there waiting to judge you on everything and, and pick at stuff. They're the ones that are just going, hey, man, I love you. I know you're not perfect, but I love you anyway. And I hate to say this because it's a bad commentary on Christianity. I had some worldly friends that were more accepting of, of me as a person, even with my flaws, than the Christians do it in the church. The Christians are so quick to point the finger and they're not getting, hey, how many fingers pointing back at you when you do this? You got three going like this right at you. You're in trouble. And every time you point the finger, every time you judge, you will get judged by God. This is not optional. So I'm here to tell you, don't judge. Follow what you, and I didn't, I didn't come up with this message, by the way. Jesus did. Don't like it, take it up with him. See, some people write me hate mail. I hate you say, don't do that. I like doing that. You go and tell things like, don't do this sin and don't do that sin. And they're my favorite pet sins. What a mean preacher you are. Look, I'm only telling you don't do it because every single sin comes with a stinger. And they're unavoidable. And the wages of all sin, it says, is death. Eventually, every sin you do will lead to death of something. If you sin in the area of lying or cheating, stealing, you will, you will kill relationships around you. Lie to your spouse. See how good it goes. Cheat, steal from your boss, from your coworker. How, how long is it going to be a good, healthy relationship with them? You will bring death to something through your sin. Sometimes it will be something inside of you will die for your sin as a punishment for what you did. Sometimes it will kill the relationships around you. Sin always carries with it a stinger of death. Don't be fooled. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, this he shall what? Reap. Why does it lead in with do not be deceived? God is not mocked. Who gets deceived? We do. Sin goes, yeah, it looks really good. The wrapper is really shiny and it's pretty. And he's like the box, you know, with the fancy bow. And, and it, it, it looks like such promise is inside of this present. And inside is death, poison to your soul. But, but Satan doesn't wrap his poison in ugly wrappers with warning labels that say death will ensue if you do this. He hides that in fine print on the bottom with a sticker over it. So you don't even, right? He's a, he's a, he's a father of all lies. He is not going to come out and say, warning, if you do this sin, you're going to kill something. If you commit adultery, you will screw up your marriage. If you go and you, you participate in these sins, don't think that they don't cut. They come with a stinger. And the only reason the Bible is telling us to avoid it is so we can now experience what life is without the stinger. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.